Hey YouTubers, I'm gonna be doing a video that most people would say, oh, I'm gonna do a short video for you. It's not gonna be short. Uh, this will be the longest one of the bunch. I am doing a series of videos about the Kawasaki Vaquero VN1700 uh, Vulcan. So we're owners of bikes that don't have 15 different ways to do the same thing like Harleys are. Uh, we can't walk into a dealership and say we need to do this or I want to do this with my bike. Uh, how do I do it? Because uh, the dealerships around here just don't know anything about these bikes. Um, they sell very few. Uh, they're uh, pretty rare. I mean, you rarely see anybody with a similar bike around uh, with this, which is one of the pluses to the bike because then it's kind of unique. But uh, also, you have to dig for the information that you need uh, when you want to do something on the bike. Uh, the Vaquero Owners Group on Facebook is probably one of the better places to uh, do that kind of stuff. So I wanted to give them a, a shout out. And then there's also the Vulcan Baggers uh, Forum. And the Vulcan Baggers are also on um, Facebook. So you can get information there as well. Uh, so uh, what we have behind me is a 2011 uh, Vulcan Vaquero VN1700. Uh, they're 103 cubic inch engines. And I wanted to go over what kind of person would want to buy them, um, and then what are some of the issues, kind of go front to back on a few of the design things, and then I'll break down smaller videos that talk more about individual things that I've done or individual issues with the bike. Um, so to start things off, I think the person that should be looking at this is somebody that, that wants an import bike, something that's going to cost less, something that's going to require less maintenance than possibly an American bike. Um, some, somebody that just wants something different. I'm one of those guys that li I like different kind of stuff. I don't want to be like everybody else and literally everybody else around here rides a Harley. We have two of the biggest uh, Harley-Davidson dealers in the state right in, in my area here in Colorado and I'm the only one that rides one of these things. Um, that said, I did have to go through a lot of work to get it where I wanted it. I paid $10,000 for it uh, almost three years ago. The prior owner bought it when it was new it was, he had 1,500 miles on it when I bought it, and then um, I put about 15,000 on it uh, through the summer seasons here, uh, taking trips and riding to and from work. So let's get down to business. So as you see, obviously it is a bagger bike. Uh, it has a fixed fairing. Uh, it has uh, the same kind of setup that you would find with the uh, road glide. So the fairing doesn't turn when the handlebars turn. It gives you very light steering, uh, which is a plus. Uh, that is an aftermarket wheel that you have in the front there. Normally they have a 16 inch wheel and a very fat uh, front tire. I wanted to maintain the same overall height so it didn't affect handling at all. Uh, so I went with an 18 inch wheel and uh, a lower profile tire that is almost as wide as the factory tire. Um, the factory tire is a little bit thicker but you see it fills out the fender fairly well here. When you go to a 21 inch wheel, which is also possible on these bikes without changing the rake on the, uh, the trees, uh, you end up with a narrower tire to some degree. I didn't necessarily want that. Um, so I just went with an 18 inch wheel. There are several companies that make these wheels for us. I don't have ABS, so ABS came along a few years later in the Macaro. So what you see here is a Harley Davidson style hub with Harley-Davidson rotors. So these are matching rotors to the wheel and you're using your stock calipers in the stock position. Um, so it's very easy to, to swap over. Uh, the downside of that is uh, this wheel can be sold to anybody that has ABS because you're gonna need uh, to have the ABS ring that's on the left hand side of the hub and you need the stock rotors. So it's something to keep in mind. Uh, this bike does not come with the three headlights normally. These uh, driving lights or passing lamps, whatever you want to call them, are from the uh, Voyager, the full touring bike version of this bike here. Um, so they install a kit from Kawasaki, they're fairly easy. You can turn them on and off separately and they have provided a lot of light, uh, plus a backup obviously if you're on a big trip and your headlight goes out, um, then you can still keep riding at night, no big deal. Uh, otherwise, in the front, things are mostly stock. This is a water-cooled engine on this bike. Uh, so you have a full radiator down here. And uh, you just want to do your typical maintenance on that with uh, changing the fluids and looking at your houses and things. Uh, keep it from getting 
too dirty because you don't want dirt caked up in there. Uh, most of us take pretty good care of our bikes. As far as cleaning this goes, so it's not a big problem. Um, also the front in the 2011s, this bezel here was chrome. I switched it out to the newer version, which is uh, body color matching. And then the windshield normally on these is very low. It's, it's just basically a very slim shield, about yay tall, and it's mostly there for looks. This is the Clockworks version. This is their 9 inch. And it is mostly for looks. You really don't get a lot of protection from it because it's very narrow. It's swooping back in this area. Um, you get basically just enough coverage for your head. And uh, if anybody's right behind you, is, you know, as a two-up position, you're going to have them looking over your shoulder somewhat. They're going to lose any kind of wind protection that it might offer. Uh, as we come around the back here of the fairing, you have the factory stereo here. There's no GPS. There's no infotainment center as Harley would consider it. Uh, and they normally come with grills on these speakers. And they're all hidden basically behind the grills. They would be a five and a quarter inch speaker with no external tweeters like this one. So one of the folks on uh, the Facebook group for the Vaquero and Voyager makes these adapters. He uses this 3D printer, designs them himself. And you just install those in. You can put six and a half inch drivers in and really increase the power. Uh, inside my fairing, I've got a Clarion amp that's hiding down up here. I did a write up on that uh, quite a while ago uh, on several of the forums. So you can see a better view here of the uh, stereo system. Everything's controlled from the grips. The controls on this bike are actually very, very good. Uh, the quality is good. Uh, the levers are very good. It has a hydraulic clutch, which you don't normally get in. Uh, most of these bikes hardly just went to a hydraulic cl clutch recently. Indian still doesn't use a hydraulic clutch. Um, so it's got a very nice feel. It's not too heavy. Uh, overall, the switches and everything are, are really high quality. They're much higher quality than my wife's um, Yamaha in, as far as the feel that they have. You can control the stereo completely from the handset here or from your control here. And uh, in this left pocket, I have an iPod that's in there. It's hooked in. You can either hook in directly to any MP3 player per the head jack, or you can buy the iPod adapter. I'm running one of the newest iPods, uh, so I had to buy an additional adapter to get it to use a lightning plug. But it does work and doesn't cause me any issues um, running that new lightning adapter. So moving on here, you do have a gear indicator here when the bike is running. You get mileage, trip, uh, how, what your uh, miles per gallon is going, 140 mile an hour speedometer. The bike will do about 115, 120 miles an hour. Uh, if you're really getting on it. Uh, it's steady, it's smooth, the bike rides great. Uh, you have a temperature gauge that uh, will fluctuate a fair amount based on uh, what's going on in the atmosphere and how much you're uh, sitting around idling, it'll jump up. Uh, you've got a full gas gauge as well, and of course, attack. This bike has electronic cruise control, so you also have full cruise control uh, capability over here to uh, keep an eye on things, uh, speed up, speed down, coast, things like that, just like you would in a car. It works great. Uh, sometimes you'll have those kick out and, and it won't work. And a lot of times that's due to the uh, brake uh, switch that will get, that will become affected uh, from rain or whatever. So you just got to keep an eye on that. Uh, the bike does come with crash bars installed uh, already. You don't have to add those on. Uh, these floorboards are from Roaring Toys. The factory floorboards are kind of a matte gray finish, uh, not as fancy looking. And this is a six-speed transmission. Uh, from the factory, this bike is awful, just awful, the way it runs. And anybody that thinks these things run awesome from the factory, as I've indicated in, in other posts, I think they were dropped on their head as children. Uh, these things are awful, awful, awful from the factory. So if you ride one and think, oh my god, this bike rides horrible, or the engine runs horrible, I would never put up with this, uh, it's true. You wouldn't put up with it. Uh, I thought I could tune it all out with a power commander. I spent a couple years trying to do it unsuccessfully. A guy named Ivan uh, from Ivan's Performance in Congress, New York, does sport bike tuning. He took this on as a project, took him a couple years to get it right, and his newest flash does it right. He offers two tunes, one for the factory airbox, one for an aftermarket intake like this. You need different fuel flow. Uh, at wide open throttle for an aftermarket intake. So he, he accomplishes that. You don't need any further tuning uh, for daily driving issues. Um, 
with his flash so you can just ship off your ECU and get all your issues fixed by sending it to him. Um, I'll see if I can post the link in the description to talk about that some. So in sixth gear, when this bike was in factory form, it was awful. Uh, you couldn't pull hill, you couldn't really stay in cruise control, so you had to kick down to fifth all the time. It was just a total mess. So that's all fixed. Uh, he does tons and tons of tuning on this bike, and it's highly worth doing the flash that he offers. Uh, so kind of getting back around to things here, uh, you do have about a five and a half gallon tank. You can get almost uh, 210, 215 miles to a tank. Uh, I might have gone farther, I can't remember offhand. And the weather is kind of turning sour, so I apologize for the, uh, the wind noise as such. I'll try to finish up the video before things get out of hand. Um, this is the tank bezel from a Voyager. It's all chrome. These bikes come all murdered out. You can get all kinds of uh, parts for these bikes that have been crashed off of YouTube. Uh, as we go on, you got the Roaring Toys intake as well. Uh, it sticks out a bunch, gets in the way of your leg. Not a super big fan of it, but it's much better than the factory intake. Well, that didn't last long. <clears throat> I'm now back in my garage. I got hailed on, rained on, poured on out there. Uh, so we're going to finish up in the garage. I was hoping to give you a better place to uh, hang out and talk about the bike, but that didn't work out. Uh, the Colorado weather is a little too uh, freaky right now, so uh, the rain seems to be settling down a little bit. <clears throat> so we'll keep talking. We're on the intake of the bike. Uh, the way the bike was designed initially, they engineered that intake specifically for um, EPA requirements. What they did was they had an air box over here. This air box side has the air filter in it. It drew in air at the top here between the V, uh, between the two engine pots, sucked in hot air here, took it down, and then ran it through a tube between the V again. That, that V area is just super heated when this engine's running, especially in factory form. This engine is really, really, really hot. Um, so they're trying to thin that air so that they can put as little fuel as possible into this engine. And it came back around this side and then went into the, the throttle body here. The problem with that is, and the air is super thin, you're barely giving it any fuel, and the bike just runs atrocious. So once you get that out of the way, and you get yourself an open air intake on this side, uh, you can then start pumping up the fuel volume. Well, Ivan does all that for you, and takes care of how the bike runs. And you can get any intake you want. This is the Roaring Toys one, it's pretty expensive. Uh, it's got a little bit of a stack here, coming out of the throttle body. It's supposed to give it better throttle response. I've had a couple of the intakes, I think they all perform identical. So you can buy from these guys, Thunder Manufacturing, um, I think Kerry Aachen has it as well. Uh, intake for this bike, buy whatever looks good, throw on your bike and know that it's you're getting all the performance you're going to get out of it. Almost all the performance gains come from the tune. Um, also I'm running a 2 into one exhaust, full exhaust from Freedom, Freedom Performance, sorry I couldn't say that. Uh, it is kind of an open baffle system. There's some conical um, baffle that's in there, but there's nothing like a Vance and Hines on my wife's bike. Her bike actually has like a plug in the end of it where they tune for each bike. They use the same muffler for each bike and then they put a plug in it and then drill a hole in that plug depending on uh, what kind of bike and what, how much airflow it needs to go. This is open, it's really pretty loud, and if you don't want it too loud, my assumption is that the Freedom Performance True Duels is probably quieter with two mufflers. That's an assumption. I don't know that for a fact. So I'm happy with this exhaust so far. Uh, it is loud, like I said, um, but that's about it. Uh, it sounds decent. It sounds like a big V8 muscle car to me when you rev it and get on it. Uh, it doesn't sound like a Harley Davidson. So moving back. Um, You've got, this is, this is the standard seat pan that would come on this bike. I've run multiple different seats, and I think this is probably the best version that I've had. This particular one um, was sent off to Mean City Cycles. I had it redone with their um, like Tempur-Pedic memory foam layer 
as well as I had a little bit more beef put in the back here. Uh, so you get a little bit more back support. And if you get off to the side, you can see the profile is a little thicker. Kind of looks like a snail or a slug to me, I guess. That it's kind of raised a little bit. And they did that to give me a little more back support on this bike. I don't like using uh, backrests. I just want everything to come from the, the seat itself. I never ride two up, so I never have any concern about um, putting a second person on here. I do have the backrest for trips in case I want to put luggage on. That is an add-on. It's pretty expensive, but man, it is built really well. So when you get this backrest for the back seat section, these brackets come with it. You have to drill a couple one-inch holes or seven-eighths holes, whatever they were, into your uh, plastic sides here. You mount everything in, and then your seat rest snaps down onto it. It locks in place. It's really well built. I'd like to say it's worth the money, but it is kind of stupid expensive. Uh, but you can't complain about how it's built. It is really nice. So this seat, I've only had for a little bit. Probably haven't had it broken in yet. Um, we'll get that broken in in a trip we're going to the mountains in just a couple weeks. But uh, it is much more comfortable than anything I've had on this before. I did ask to have it done in this stitching. Uh, they will do anything you want. This is vinyl uh, that they use. You could have done it in leather. It costs more money. Uh, this seat on the Vaticaro is locked in place. So you have a, a key on the side here. You can see right behind that rear foot peg. And uh, you lock and unlock it, take it off. Once you take it off, you have access to the battery and the ECU and everything else. Uh, you also have two hooks, uh, one on each side, right in here for uh, locking helmets if you want to. I use it every once in a while if we're gonna be away from the bike and I'm using uh, my Arrive full face. <clears throat> so, you can do whatever you want with these rear pegs. The factory ones are decent uh, as far as grip and how they work, but they don't look very good, so I moved to uh, chrome ones from uh, Karyakin, and they seem to work pretty good. So this does have a heel shifter, something I forgot to mention. Heel shifter comes standard. Uh, you can adjust it for any size boot you want, uh, and it does work pretty well. The gearbox in this bike is really slick. Um, I've hardly had any issues with missing shifts or anything. Uh, mostly it's because when I change to these, it's uh, set up here is a little bit different. I had to make an adjustment, but it's not too bad at all. You do get full crash protection for the back, or I should say if you, you know, drop the bike. Uh, these you can support the whole bike on. You can use these for jack stands for changing the rear tire. It works out very well. You just use regular automotive jack stands once you jack up the bike. Because um, this thing is heavy as all get out, so you want a nice sturdy stand when working on it. The bags on this bike. Uh, these are fairly old, uh, old design that Kawasaki has had for years. They used to run these on different versions of the Vulcan, like the 1500, I think, had these bags. They're side opening bags. Uh, they're not super big, but you can put a, a good size laptop bag in these, which is what I use when I go to work. Um, just a big Timbuktu bag that goes in there holding my laptop and uh, some books and things. So you can take a trip with just these two bags and not put anything on the rear, depending on how much stuff you take with you. So you can keep that in mind that uh, a fair amount of stuff goes in there. These are locked. The only time you can take the key out is if you lock it. So you can't leave and accidentally uh, forget to lock it. They're not super deep in the front. You got the suspension that rides in here. So they're kind of clearance for the suspension. They're all plastic with a little bit of foam liner on the bottom. And then there's some straps that you can strap in uh, things to keep them from falling out. The other interesting thing is with these open, they're kind of like a little work area. So if you eat lunch out of the, the side on a trip somewhere uh, at a rest stop, you can pull your food out, throw it down there, throw other stuff down here on the, the uh, floor. The other side actually works better because the bike's lean to the left on the stand. So when it's open, it's almost flat and it, you can actually use it. Put your computer on if you need to. I know it sounds a little goofy, but if you're doing a lot of tuning on the bike, because you've chosen not to get Ivan's deal, you'll be continuously tuning this thing forever because you just can't tune it right um, without totally flashing the ECU. The locks have never failed me. They're nice heavy duty. And once you close, you lock it. And it's pretty good. Uh, you guys are taking these off. You can fill them with some kind of plugs. There's two holes in here. Once you get it all off, they're kind of a pain in the butt. I've left it alone. The rear end of this bike, I think, looks pretty decent to start with. Uh, there are some complaints that guys have that the lighting is not very good or the uh, turn signals are too bulky. So they will change, uh, change out this whole setup. 
Uh, it is real clean underneath, so if you do pull it off, there's nothing that has to be filled. Um, so it's just something to think about. You can do a lot of custom things with carry and parts or other, other brands. Uh, the antennas on there doesn't work real well for the radio, uh, so you're constantly changing channels as things go in and out of, uh, in and out of tune. For the rear end on these, they normally, unless you get the special edition, they come with black wheels. And I don't know if you can see in there, I've actually got a Voyager rear wheel. It's silver, just to match the uh, front chrome, just a little bit better. Uh, they normally run a metric size tire that is more towards metric bikes. <clears throat> I've switched out to the uh, 180 width tire. I think it's a 180-65. And I highly recommend the Commander 2s on any bike that you've got. Uh, any big touring bike. Uh, they just last forever. The traction's amazing. Way, way, way better than the bridge stones that came on these bikes. I burned through a couple set of bridge stones and then switched to these. Much happier. Traction's better. It's just all around a better tire. So these, these bikes have a problem with uh, how they run from the factory. Ivan has fixed that. Um, the seat is fairly comfortable. Doesn't have a whole lot of uh, padding for the low butt um, there are options around to beat that I didn't like the uh, factory grips so switch those out uh, but otherwise the, uh, the bikes ergonomics are very good they're better than most of the other bikes that I've been on uh, so I would strongly recommend it from an ergonomics standpoint I run about 511 uh, 210 pounds and I have kind of short legs but when I get on the bike <coughs> it's super comfortable no real complaints that's got a lock and gas cap, and over here you can lock the bars by turning it to the left, pushing down, turning to the left, lock the bars, or you can go to the accessory position here, have the stereo come on, or the full run position where everything lights up. You see that console now, you know, giving me my miles per gallon, my trip, time, and idiot lights as well as the gear indicator. And then there's your uh, stereo setup. These are one and a quarter inch bars. So they are thicker, they look better. You don't have to switch them um, if you don't want to. I know guys, a lot of guys like to run H, so there's a couple companies that make H for, for this bike. But you can see there's some clearance concerns. So you can't just get any H, you gotta have H for this bike. And then when they come up in this direction, you gotta be careful with what windshield you have because you can run into hitting the windshield. Something to keep in mind when you're looking at, at H. This bike is lowered. I don't know if you got a good picture of the stance. One thing that I didn't cover when I'm talking about it. Laverne Kawasaki, I think it's in Minnesota, makes lowering links for this bike. Drops the rear end about an inch. And in the front, when I rebuilt the forks recently, because uh, this is a six-year-old bike, one of the fork seals was starting to leak when I went in to change the steering head bearings. I found the leaky seal and then discovered that I needed to rebuild that. So went ahead and did that. I stiffened up the front a little bit by adding a little extra oil uh, to the maximum of the factory specifications. And then I set it up to slip the forks. I got about five eighths of an inch of, of slip in the, uh, the trees here. And that overall five eighths inch drop in the front as well as the about inch in the rear has made a huge difference in how the bike handles uh, as well as stiffening up, stiffening up the front end helped as well. Um, so it's something to think about. These bikes come full height as a full touring bike, just like the Voyager would. They're not like the uh, Street Glide and the Road Glide that actually come lowered from the factory a little bit um, as opposed to their full touring bikes. So just keep that in mind when you get them there. They're a little bit tall. The guys that say they're shorter, um, they're like 5'8", have shorter legs, like the rear end lowered. You can also slip the front end. It doesn't cost you anything. Uh, so it's something to think about. Just a little bit of time to pull it all apart and move some pieces. You actually have to take the forks out to do that. And then you slide down a little retainer ring to the right length and then slide them back up and put them back in the bike. So that's an overview of a 2011 Kawasaki Vaquero VN 1700 and a few things that I've done to it. Uh, hopefully this starts uh, some cordial conversation about this particular bike. Um, and somebody looking at getting one, you know, you're trying to decide between a Victory, which is being phased out, an Indian, which is super expensive, and a Harley, which is super expensive. What are you looking for? I'll answer some more questions on that if, if anybody has them. Um, you know, what kind of issues I've had with the bike, what suggestions I would make for people looking at this bike. If you have questions, ask them. 
Uh, if you got negative Nancy comments and you just don't like my video, just keep that shit to yourself. I don't really care. Um, I'm just taking my time to, to give back to the community of the, the Vulcan owners to go over a few things on the bike and then kind of just answer generic questions. Um, if anybody has any, they want to post them below. What I'll do is maybe make some other shorter videos of things about the front wheel that I dealt with, things about the lowering links in the rear, uh, things about the exhaust, and, and especially about Ivan's tune, uh, so people have a better idea about that. Uh, so those will come a little bit later. This gives you a rundown of what I've done on the bike so far. Uh, there's probably a few things I didn't talk about, but uh, we'll get that covered later. So that's what I got for now. Um, hope this is somewhat informative to somebody that might be looking at these things or somebody that has one and they're thinking about stuff they want to do to it. Bikes are super comfortable to ride on. They got lots of power once Ivan does his thing for you. And then uh, the ergonomics are really nice. So there's several pluses. I don't think the side opening bags are a big minus. They're a little weird, um, but not a big deal. Uh, so that's it. Ask your questions down below. I'll post a few uh, um, different links to pieces within the video so it's easier to get back to different things if you want to re-hear something or send somebody a link about something in particular on my bike. That is it for now. Thank you very much. See you guys later.